good morning my topic will be ultrasonic ultrasonographic diagnosis of gastrointestinal perforation i am dr raj lakshmi from dr shankar rao chavan government medical college introduction to gastrointestinal perforation on ultrasound okay gastrointestinal perforation is a potentially life threatening condition characterized by a hole or tear in the wall of the gastrointestinal tract which allows the contents of gut to leak into the abdominal cavity leading to severe peritonitis and sepsis so ga perforations can occur to due to various causes like peptic ulcers diverticulitis trauma malignancies early and accurate diagnosis is very crucial to prevent morbidity and mortality traditionally x rays and uh, clinical diagnosis were more than enough but ultrasound has also emerged as a valuable non invasive and accessible diagnostic tool in diagnosing Uh, GI perforations, especially in the emergency settings, ultrasound offers several advantages in the diagnosis of GI perforation, including the ability to detect free intraperitoneal air, visualize fluid collections, and assess for localized or generalized peritonitis. So this paper basically explores the role of ultrasound in diagnosing gastrointestinal perforations. So aims to study the incidence of gastrointestinal perforations of 400 patients presenting with acute abdomen and suspected to have hollow viscous perforation clinically and presenting to the emergency room between June to November of 2024. Objectives: so indication will be to correctly identify the signs of perforation on ultrasound in high risk patients and incidence to characterize uh, the incidence into appendicular perforation and other causes of causes of perforation. and to find out the overall incidence of each methodology methodology this study design was an observational study uh, place of study department of radio diagnosis at dr s c g m c nandet inclusion criteria patients suspected to have hollow viscous perforation presenting to the emergency room with both traumatic and non traumatic history exclusion criteria all other causes of acute abdomen like acute pancreatitis acute cholecystitis diverticulitis ectopic pregnancy torsion of ovaries and testes bowel obstructions acute appendicitis were ruled out sample size uh, so for 400 was the sample size and method we used um, standard protocol for gray scale scale imaging of abdomen using curvilinear probe and high frequency probe so imaging findings uh, the most commonly found out findings were intra uh, the peritoneal stripe enhancement with posterior dirty acoustic shadowing uh, just above the liver and most patients also had moderate interval free fluid with dense echos uh, for an air forming and echogenic stripe showing posterior reverberation artifact and fluid uh, this patient you can see free fluid in the morrison's pouch with dirty echos and uh, we can also see echogenic mesentery inflamed bowel loop again interval free fluid with dense echos and extra luminal air focus in this case and this is a patient who had uh, on ultrasound we diagnosed to have a loculated collection with the dirty shadowing and extra luminal air focus and on x ray we were able to find the uh, air under diaphragm and it came out to be sigmoid or colon perforation perforated appendix in appendix in rif uh, this patient presented with acute abdominal pain uh, and was suspected to have perforation clinically also because of too much guarding at rf and here uh, we can see an inflamed appendix and there was there was a suspicious breach at the base and uh, inflamed adjacent bowel loops and uh, free fluid and it came out to be perforated appendix so the results were out of the 400 patients of acute abdomen 153 were having gastrointestinal perforation and 240 47 people were having other causes of acute abdomen and they were excluded so causes of perforation uh appendicular perforation was the most common uh forming 49% of cases 75 had uh perfor appendicular perforation pre pyloric perforation uh was in 34 patients 17 patients had ileal perforation three patients had duodenal perforations uh 10 patients had colonic perforation following inflammatory conditions like tuberculosis or typhoid and some patients had coexistence of both of uh, perforation and obstruction uh and three patients who had penetrating abdominal trauma have gastrointestinal perforation and the most common findings on ultrasound echogenic peritoneal stripe in uh, 66 patients 
free fluid with extra luminal air in 127 patients. Echogenic mesentery was seen in 46 patients and inflamed bubble in 53 patients. And breach in appendix were found in 60 patients. So the advantage of ultrasound and GA perforation diagnosis is it is very uh, rapid evaluation in critical care. It is non-invasive. Real-time imaging is possible and no radiation is involved. Still, it has its limitations because of bowel gas artifacts and it is purely operator dependence. With experience, uh, we can, a radiologist can detect perforation on ultrasound. So ultrasound has its own limitation. Sensitivity for detecting small amounts of free air or subtle perforations is lower compared to CT. Of course, CT is always superior, uh, which remains uh, as the gold, gold standard for confirming the diagnosis, particularly when detailed information about the location and extent of perforation is needed. But ultrasound is an important first-line imaging tool, right, as in uh, emergency situations uh, because of its wider availability and uh, low cost. With high-end missions and proper training, the accuracy of diagnosis of gastrointestinal perforations increases. Ultimately, ultrasound serves as a key initial diagnostic step, but should be used in conjunction with clinical evaluation and other imaging techniques for comprehensive assessment of GA perforation. So these are my references. Thank you.